Venezuela now is in quite a bit of turmoil and there's been a lot of contradictory evidence about which way going forward and how, what is the U.S. policy towards Venezuela. In December 2015, the Venezuelan opposition won a two-thirds majority in the National Assembly in the, the Congress. And ever since then, the, uh, the president of, uh, of Venezuela, Maduro, has done everything he can to avoid having to actually share power. It's true that the opposition hasn't always played fair, but we shouldn't use that to uh, give a pass to the actions of uh, the Maduro government. The Maduro government is very willing to enter into dialogue and has been all along. In fact, there was a meeting between the Venezuelan opposition and the government uh, about a year ago where there was a, a document that both sides had agreed to. The government had signed and the opposition was about to sign, but at the last minute it received a call from Washington and they were told, no, do not sign the document. We have something better in mind. We'll help you with a coup attempt. They have said quite openly that their primary and in fact only goal is to remove President Maduro from power. He has entrenched himself in state and power through undemocratic means. That takes us to the May 2018 uh, electoral process, which was deeply flawed. Maduro refused to allow any kind of international observation and did not accredit uh, domestic observers. There were over 100 election observers, including COHA personnel who were there. We're told how the opposition were crowded out how they were banned. Well, as it happens, the opposition boycotted. I think that was a mistake because there's plenty of reason to believe that they could have won, even under the, uh, the lack of very clear guarantees uh, that, that, that were in place, simply because of how deeply unpopular Maduro was. Myth number three, Juan Guaido, represents a return to democracy in Venezuela. The US has recognized Guaido as the legitimate president, uh, they've given him control of, the, uh, of a number of diplomatic facilities in the United States. Uh, they were pushing for it at the UN. Credible polling shows that Guaido has the support of something like 70%, 75% uh, in the country. The idea that they have 70% support from the Venezuelan population <clears throat> is so laughable, I feel like it would be beneath my dignity to even respond to it. According to Alfred Desaius, the UN Rapporteur, who did an extensive study into Venezuela, between seven and nine million Venezuelans consider themselves committed Chavistas. It's very important to, to recognize that, that, that Chavismo has a historical legacy of support, but Maduro does not have popular support. The opposition faction that Guaido represents isn't even representative of the Venezuelan uh, opposition itself. This self-appointed interim figure is an obscure figure in Venezuelan politics. Before he even appointed himself to this role, over 80% of the Venezuelan public had never even heard of him. Worst of all, and this is what most undermines his credibility, is that Guaido is a U.S. puppet. The U.S. has been trying its hardest to ensure some kind of split within the armed forces, and we just haven't seen that. It's now about three to four months since the beginning of the coup in late January of this year. Maduro remains in power. This campaign has uh, succeeded uh, with uh, the recognition of over 50 countries. What he leaves out is that in reality a majority of countries in the world actually still recognize Maduro. The support from the European countries for Guaido has to be taken with a grain of salt. These countries have long been beholden to US power and its ability to coerce other countries. In 2017, the U.S. began uh, economic sanctions. Uh, so the U.S. started to sanction Venezuelan access to the financial system. Under three exceptions, transactions having to do with the import of food, medicine, and they wouldn't apply to any transactions or any new debt that was approved by the legitimately elected uh, National Assembly. This was a strong incentive for Maduro to come to the table once more and uh, share power with the, with the legislature and function within the normal rules of democracy, and he chose uh, not to do it. January of this year, we saw the U.S. impose oil sanctions. 
These oil sanctions uh, do not contain any of the exceptions of the, the financial sanctions, and uh, they amount to essentially collective punishment of the Venezuelan population, because the oil sector in Venezuela accounts for about 75% of the hard currency that the Venezuelan state uses to pay for imports. I am expecting to see the, the economic crisis on the ground in Venezuela get much worse as a result of these sanctions, and uh, I think it's going to deepen human suffering, and we're, we're, we're deeply concerned by that. The reality is that the U.S. doesn't care one iota about humanitarian crises or human rights violation, whether it be in Venezuela, the wider region, or anywhere else. Not only has it turned a blind eye to huge humanitarian crises, but it's in fact been complicit with many of these humanitarian crises. Venezuela has been singled out because it threatens U.S. geopolitical and strategic and economic interests in the region and the wider world. It's been strengthening regional organizations such as UNASUR and founding some such as CELAC, which threaten Washington's hegemony. We hear ad nauseum from Washington that Venezuela is a dictatorship, that it's a narco state, that it's a basket case of incompetence and corruption, and that it's on the verge of being a failed state. And worst of all, it somehow shows that socialism uh, always ends in failure. The causes of the latest economic crisis, for instance, are highly complex and highly contested amongst experts. Venezuela has always had a highly unstable economy because of its dependence on oil. This leaves it subject to huge catastrophes when oil prices fall. Furthermore, Venezuela's human rights record is not particularly egregious compared to the rest of the world or even the rest of the hemisphere. The only way out of it is to move towards dialogue between the two sides. The alternative is just going off the rails uh, and accepting that there is a complete failed state uh, in, in South America and that doesn't appeal to anybody. That doesn't appeal to the United States, that doesn't appeal to China, that doesn't appeal to Russia. Uh, no country will have its economic interests met uh, if Venezuela collapses entirely.